information, this presentation will be recorded. So, Jeff, if you would, please start that recording. I'm mad. I'm supposed to be able to log into this meeting by WebEx, and I'm not able to. I'm so mad. We hear you, ma'am. Um, so, if you can keep hearing us, then just uh, hit mute on your, your phone, and you should still yeah. hear the audio. Starting like for now, and so I'm having to go in through the phone. Boy, I see you on. But, yeah, they're going to be showing us the streets and stuff we can partner with the county on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to meet up at Mount Tabor at noon. And see, we're, we'll be walking the streets over in that area, but we're supposed to meet at Mount Tabor. But okay. I think we were able to handle that. Uh, so good morning again. We're discussing the city, the Tarrant County 2021 transportation bond, as well as the city's 2022. Oh, that's a mouthful uh, proposed bond. Uh, so we will be recording this presentation. This recording will be available on our website at the address mentioned below, and we'll certainly provide that again at the end of the presentation. I'd like to introduce some of my co presenters. Uh, we have Chad Edwards. He is. Uh, the Regional Mobility Assistant Director for Transportation and Public Works. We also have Raj Gupta. He is our city traffic engineer, so he's helped uh, with the, the intersection projects, planning those. And then we also have Jeff Allen. So Jeff Allen is our communication specialist for the city of Fort Worth, and he'll be helping us today, taking your questions, making sure we get your contact information if we have to follow up with you on any, any specific information. So if you would take a second and go download the handout shown at the, the web page listed below. So our handout page one is a visual of the arterial and intersection projects proposed for the 2021 Tarrant County bond, as well as the city's proposed 2022 bond. Page two is a visual of both our 2014, 2018 and 2022 arterial projects. And then page three is also a visual of the 2014, 2018, and 2022 uh, bond program intersection projects. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the 2018 bond progress. Uh, then we're going to kind of discuss the, the rules as we understand them for the Tarrant County Transportation Bond Program. Then we'll kind of get into our individual projects that we're proposing um, and then kind of discuss the past fo path forward. So again, just wanted to touch on a high level at where we're at with the 2014 and 2018 bond program. So our 2014 bond program has $26 million remaining in the budget, of which McCart Avenue phase one and phase two are $19 million. So those projects are projected to award construction this September with construction completing in November 2022 and October 2023, respectively. So the chart shown here is what we call our spend projection. So we currently have 56 projects that will be going to construction within the next 12 months. We currently have over 200 projects in our bond program portfolios. So in May of 2022, when we assume our bond program will be voted upon, we'll have eight projects remaining from the 2018 bond program. So in order to speed up delivery for the bond program, design right away utility relocation will begin this summer on selected projects. So this January, Council authorized the appropriation of $9.8 million in future improvement agreement funds for the project kickoff activities relating to the 2022 bond program. So this is just an overview of our proposed 2022 bond program. So the categories listed in red are our named projects within the bond. All other categories are buckets for which the projects will be named at a later date. So today we're going to focus on arterials, intersections, traffic signals, as these are eligible for the Tarrant County bond participation. We'll be discussing each individual project in this presentation. So at this time, Tarrant County bond funds were assumed to be half of the total project costs minus any funds spent to date. So the general idea is that the more funds we can leverage in these eligible categories with Tarrant County bond funds, 
the more projects we'll be able to accomplish. So it should be noted that these funding totals will change between now and the proposed city of Fort Worth bond election in May of 2022. So projects discussed today are in the conceptual phase. So some project details may not be known at this point. So just a little bit about the Tarrant County bond opportunity before we get started. On January 28th, city staff was officially informed of the $400 million 2021 Tarrant County Transportation Bond Program. So staff has reviewed the following criteria to put forward projects with the best chance of selection. Our first category is, is a general call for projects. So this category is funded for up to $200 million. Likely this will be split about 15, about $50 million per precinct. So the local match must be at least 50% of the total project cost. So TPW plans to submit arterials, intersections, and traffic signal improvements for this cat category. So the county is going to be establishing a project evaluation committee to develop a priority list of projects that will be subject to the commissioner's court uh, modification and approval. The second category is discretionary. So this project category is funded for up to $75 million. Now, based on past history with the Tarrant County bond program, uh, we understand that the funding category allocates about $15, $15 million to each of the five commissioner court members. And that allocation is at about $1.5 million per year. So that really impacts the type of projects that we'll be submitting for this category. So TPW staff are meeting with commissioners to discuss projects planned in their precincts and projects in this category will be selected by the commissioner's court members. So the countywide initiatives and partnerships category is funded for up to $125 million. This category will reserve funding for strategic projects identified by the commissioner's court aimed at providing multi-jurisdictional benefits and enhancing financial leveraging opportunities. So the projects in this category will also be selected by the commissioner's court. All right, we'll get into the arterial projects. So our city bond prioritization took into account the following criteria listed here using both a spatial analysis, so GIS and mapping, as well as other non-spatial considerations like economic development opportunities and if the project is a gap in our built out areas. So again, to maximize leveraging opportunities with the Tarrant County bond program, priority was given in this exercise for projects that Increase capacity, projects that promote economic development, grade separated railroad crossings, and projects that can start construction within the next four years. So 2022 to 2026. So the next two slides provide our estimated total project costs and funding categories. 12 arterials and one grade separated railroad crossing are being recommended for both the 2022 bond as well as the Tarrant County bond. So our numbers at this time assume all supplementary funding will be approved by the county bond as well as impact fee funds. So the project numbers on your map handout refer to the project ranking order. So this will be reassessed after our Tarrant County funding options are known. So each project will be discussed in the following slides. So the following is a summary project description and the earliest start of construction based on our typical um, design contract lengths. All arterial projects are planned to be built to the master thoroughfare plan cross section. So these dates assume that design will start this summer. So projects requiring extensive right of way, uh, railroad interaction, uh, waters of the US permitting are assumed to have a longer pre-construction phase duration. So Trinity Boulevard phase one from 820 to Salado Trail is anticipated to go into construction at the end of this fiscal year. So this phase two project will be the continuation of that four lane divided thoroughfare. So Cromwell Marine Creek, this project was carried over from the 2018 bond program. In the 2018 bond program, it was an intersection only improvement. 
So in the 2022 bond program, this will be a design to the full master thoroughfare plan, which is a four lane divided thoroughfare. So this project will also tie into the 2014 bond project for Marine Creek Parkway and Old Decatur Road. Currently, we're at 30% construction plans for this thoroughfare. So if approved by the 2022 bond, this project would go into construction in about the fall of 2022. So Avondale Hazlitt, again, this is another project carried over from the 2018 bond program. The scope of work was changed. It was changed quite significantly from intersection only uh, to the full MTP cross section. So currently we're working on 30% plans and schematics for Avondale Hazlitt. Our project is gonna begin just east of Willow Creek North. Uh, to the west of Willow Creek North is already four lanes. Our pl plans pursue between 110 and 120 foot right away to match the city of Hazlitt's concrete section. So the proposed Bonds Ranch Road is a four lane divided with the ability to expand to six lanes in the future. This project includes filling the gap between the existing two lane Wagley Robertson to the north uh, as it connects with Bonds Ranch Road. So this project is also an extension of the 2018 Bonds Ranch project from 287 to 156. So WJ Boaz from Boat Club Road to Elkins School Road is planned as a four lane divided thoroughfare with a spring 2025 construction start date. So this project will help flatten that curve and build the long term intersection improvements at WJ Boaz and Bowman Roberts. So the eastern half of this roadway will likely be built by development as the preliminary plats are currently in process. So Park Vista Boulevard is for the design and construction of about 0.47 miles of two additional lanes of traffic to complete the ultimate four lane divided thoroughfare designated by the MTP, uh, the master thoroughfare plan. So this project is building the other two lanes to fill that gap. This project also ties into two 2014 projects from Park Vista from Kaler to Timberland and Timberland from 377 to Excelsior Lane. So Ray White Road South and North is a capacity increasing project that will provide that route between Golden Triangle and Heritage Trace. It's currently planned as a five lane undivided. So that means uh, four lanes with a dual left turn lane. Right now we're assuming a roundabout will be constructed in, in lieu of a signal at the intersection uh, with Wall Price Keller, but ultimately that will be decided during design through an intersection control evaluation. So this project will also tie into the 2018 bond projects on Kroger Drive uh, from 377 to Heritage Park. So again, Ray, Wright, Ray White Road North uh, is a continuation of the project we just discussed. So it should be noted that this corridor is fully developed along this, these project limits. So Keller Hicks Road Project will complete the corridor from US 377. Um, Keller Hicks from Lauren Way to US 377 is currently a 2018 bond uh, slash developer slash city of Keller project with constructed, construction expected to begin uh, next fall or winter. So it is planned as a three lane undivided thoroughfare plan, thoroughfare. So Meacham Boulevard is preliminary planned as a five lane undivided thoroughfare. There are no planned improvements to the existing four lane bridge over the train tracks since the MTP section is a four lane plus a dual left turn lane. So the developer will construct the southern half as denoted in the blue between Dean Road and I-35. So the proposed Heritage Trace Parkway would provide a continuous corridor from, from Boat Club Road to 377. So this project is assuming a grade separated crossing over the railroad east of 287 slash Saginaw Boulevard. Um, we would be re relocating the Hicksfield at grade crossing, opening up development along Heritage Trace.
So Intermodal Parkway has been identified as an economic development opportunity for the construction of four lanes from the BNSF logistics facility to Old Blue Mound Road, so where the railroad tracks are. $5.1 million in transportation impact fees would be used to match the Tarrant County bond funds for the reconstruction and widening of Intermodal Parkway if selected by Tarrant County bond. So fun fact, uh, railroads are not allowing new or additional at grade crossings. So the Evermoon Parkway is what we call a grade separated crossing. So basically we would have to go either over the railroad or under the railroad, most likely over. Um, it would be a new east-west road segment linking Everman to I-35, you know, and potentially taking traffic off of, of Sycamore School Road. So there is an, an existing industrial development at the east end. So this property would allow for potential economic development opportunities in this area through this project. So that concludes our arterial projects. We'll move into intersection projects. And again, we can always go back to these slides, you know, certainly pay attention to the, uh, the, the slide number at the bottom that would make it easier to go back. So the following intersection projects will increase capacity and improve safety for both our pedestrians and motorists. These in intersection projects will all include a change to the geometric layout of the intersection. So we're talking about adding lanes, um, adding medians, uh, you know, physical improvements. We'll be pursuing Tarrant County bond funding for all of these intersection projects. And we also have individ individual project slides to follow. So Jacksboro Highway and West, West Northside Drive slash North University Drive, this project will increase capacity and reduce the stack up by constructing an additional left turn lane on Northside Drive. Pedestrian safety will also be increased through the upgrading of ADA ramps to compliance. So McCart Avenue and West Creek Drive, this project will improve the site distance by constructing a zero offset left turn lane. So that's where the turn lanes are aligned, uh, as well as an increased capacity and re reduced delays at this intersection. So Camp Bowie Boulevard and Bryan Urban Road, this project is designed to increase capacity by constructing an additional left turn lane on Camp Bowie Boulevard. Camp Bowie Boulevard and Horn Street. So this project will improve mobility and increase safety by modifying the number of access points so close to this intersection. We plan to construct a 100 foot narrow raised median along Horn Street uh, from Camp Bowie to the north converting the narrow lock and camp buoy service approaches into right in and right out only. So this will also remove the 400 feet of the Rosedale leg from Horn to the east and reconstruct a new outside lane for camp buoy that can only be accessed um, from Rosedale Street or Lock Avenue. So North Tarrant Parkway and North Beach Street this project will increase capacity by constructing dual left turn lanes, uh, channelized turn lanes. It will also increase safety by reducing the pedestrian crossing distance, as well as upgrading the ADA, ADA ramps to compliance. Alta Mesa Boulevard and Woodway Drive. So this project will increase capacity by constructing channelized islands with a positive offset. So the island uh, will be to the right of the turn lane. So you can see the oncoming traffic a little better. Uh, project, this project will increase safety by reducing the pedestrian crossing distance as well as upgrading the ADA compliant ramps. So this area is beginning to develop but this project will increase capacity by adding left turn lanes on Forest Hill Drive, as well as increasing safety by providing the ADA, amp, ADA ramps. East Berry Street and South Riverside Drive. This project includes the addition of channelized islands to reduce that pedestrian crossing distance, which will increase capacity, reduce delays, as well as increase safety of the pedestrian through the ADA ramps. Trinity Boulevard and Eula South Main Street. So this project will increase site distances by constructing those zero offset turn lanes, 
Uh, it will increase capacity as well as safety by providing the ADA ramps. South Hewland Street and West Risinger Road. So this project will improve site distances by constructing the, a zero offset, so an aligned left turn lane on Risinger Road. We'll be increasing the signal operation and efficiency by reducing the number of phases. Uh, this project will also increase capacity and safety through the addition of ADA ramps. Brian Urban Road and Oakmont Boulevard. So this project will improve site distance by constructing the zero offset left turn lane in Oakmont Boulevard. Uh, we'll also be increasing the signal operation and efficiency by reducing the number of phases, as well as increasing capacity. Safety will be increased through the addition of the ADA ramps. So the scope of the Main Street traffic signal upgrades is is to install the powder coated black poles, arms, uh, pedestrian traffic signals, pa new pavement markings, signage, as well as curb extensions and ADA ramps from Main Street from 1st to 9th, excluding 3rd and 4th. Okay, we'll move on to traffic signal projects. So the following traffic signal projects will provide for the installation of new traffic signals to increase mobility, enhance safety, reduce congestion, and improve connectivity on intersections where a traffic control signal is justified. So these are examples of intersections where there may be a stop sign, a four-way stop sign, but we know we have enough traffic count to justify a traffic signal there. So this these projects are also part of a, a larger bucket of $19.5 million. Um, so these will be adjusted as um, those other bucket properties are known. And we do not have individual slides for these. So wanted to bring up a, a special project, a partnership with the city of Ulysses. So the city of Euless section of the pipeline project is currently at 90% design. The city of Euless contacted the city with a proposition to pay half of our local match. So this would mean that the city is leveraging 75% of the total project cost. So upon further investigation of this project, it was realized that the project has benefit to support the city's 25% funding level. So the project benefits include a new concrete section that will reduce future maintenance costs, um, as well as increasing stormwater capacity through the installation of a new storm drain system. So our path forward, we are in a kind of a, a short timeline with the, the Tarrant County bond, um, you know, through the end of March and April, we'll be coordinating with our city council, our community, uh, the council of governments, as well as the commissioners, to kind of finalize our 2021 Tarrant County bond list. We hosted a public meeting on March 23rd, and this is our last public meeting today on these proposed bond, on the proposed Tarrant County bond list. On April 6th, there'll be an MNC on the city for a city council resolution of support, certifying our local funding commitment. So like we stated before, each of these projects will require a, at least a 50% local funding commitment. On April 16th, our applications are due to Tarrant County. So throughout the summer and fall, uh, we'll be hosting community meetings for the city of Fort Worth's proposed bond. And then in, in May and August, Tarrant County will begin their project evaluation with the Tarrant County Commissioner's report, court approval expected on August 16th. So Tarrant County's bond election is scheduled for November 2nd. And our proposed City of Fort Worth bond election is scheduled for May of 2022. So that concludes our presentation. We'd like to open the floor up to questions, um, but I'll leave this slide up here. So th this is our contact information. Again, at the beginning, we introduced myself. I'm Lauren Freer, uh, Chad Edwards. He's our Assistant Director for Regional Mobility. So he helps plan the arterials projects. And then we have Raj Gupta, who is our city traffic engineer, who helps plan the intersection and mobility projects.
Do we have any questions? Feel free to use the chat box or unmute yourself. It should be noted that this presentation will be available at the uh, website listed here. So if you want to go back to anything or uh, email this to your, your neighborhood association, please feel free to do so. Uh, there's also the, the map handout that is, is handy as well. Okay, not hearing any questions. Uh, we'll stay on the line for about five more minutes. Um, but I think this concludes our meeting. Thank you for your time this morning on a, on a beautiful Saturday. Um, again, please feel free to check back at our, our project website, you know, specifically uh, in, in August after we know a little bit more about the Tarrant County bond um, opportunities and throughout the summer for community meeting requests. Thank you. Have a good, good afternoon.